what else on this? Sure. Yes. Yesterday, you said the rebels are responsible for the vast majority of violations mm -hmm. of the peace deal. You said you would uh, check how you came to that conclusion. What's, and I what's did that for you, you? I said Thank I would. You. Yes, and I actually read some of these OSCE daily uh, and weekly reports that you were quoting from. I wanted to get familiar with them. Some of these or all well, of I didn't these read all. in two months? For February, it started in, in February months. 15th was Minsk mm -hmm. implementation, so there's more than two months of daily reports. But uh, I read some of them just to get familiar with what they look like and what's in them, and I think uh, just a couple of points here. Uh, first, uh, our assessment is, uh, based on OSCE uh, reporting and other sources of information, including the location, the kind of weaponry, and other evidence, uh, that the majority of ceasefire violations, as we've said, have been committed by the combined Russian separatist forces. One thing that st struck me about the OSCE reports is that uh, they, their tabulations and analysis, by, by definition, do not ascribe blame for who commits these acts. They uh, merely point out where they take place. So I, well, let me finish and then you can follow up. So uh, I've looked at some of them and they say, for example, uh, the special monitoring mission noticed this happening in Luhansk. They don't say who did this. So it's the analysis uh, that we do with this in, in addition to location, kind of weaponry, and other sources of information that leads to our judgment uh, that a majority of these uh, were committed uh, by Russian uh, separatist forces. Again, they don't do you ascribe have a number? blame. Do you have a number of violations that you saw in those reports, let's say in two months? Well, there are I, the reports, uh, to be fair, don't always have tabulations in that way. Sometimes they talk about specific incidents in a particular city, but again, they don't describe blame. How do you come to that conclusion? Well, do you I have said, a quote from the OSC spokesperson who mm -hmm. says that one of the sides is responsible for the vast majority of violations? Uh, Do the OSCE does not assign blame for violations. They just they just note where violations so take place. So it is your analysis, like. but without a number. You are saying the overwhelming mm -hmm. number of violations, so how, but you don't have a number. So do you? how we do the do well, how we do this analysis mm -hmm. is we take a look at the OSCE reports and we go through them and note where they take place, what kinds of weapons are used, who's operating in that area, who has the ability to use those weapons. We match that up with other information we have uh, that's out there in the public domain, certainly other, um, other information we have as well, uh, to make a determination, an analytic determination about who was responsible for these different kinds so of violations. So your analytical determination? So we've looked Based at, on a at, body of evidence. At the daily reports of the OSC for, and I for did, the last I did two this months, morning as well. Well, we counted uh, the violations uh, and in cease, ceasefire violations and weapons withdrawal violations and the numbers are about the same. I, I, I cited them well, yesterday, the OSCE, and, and I can do that but now. Are those, but, your, so, okay, wait, are those your numbers? Because they're not OS, OSCE numbers don't assign blame. I understand. So you're analyzing the reports. Also, we, we can do that, too. Them. We can see those daily reports. So one of an example of a report, May 1st, just outside government-controlled uh, Nikolaevka, 41 kilometers south of Donetsk, the SMM, the monitoring mission, mm -hmm. saw three what it assessed to be outgoing tank rounds fired from a lo location approximately two kilometers mm -hmm. to the north. An incoming round followed, impacting approximately 200 meters north mm -hmm. of the SMM's position. So, so that is uh, an example. And it looks like one side fires and the other uh, responds. You see that in many, in, in many mm -hmm. of the reports. Wouldn't that make for equal an equal number of violations on both sides well, in that very limited uh, example you're noting from May 1st but we're taking a look at the entire breadth of reporting from February 15th when the Minsk implemented when Minsk took effect to now which is more, much more than two months and so if, if you look overall at every single daily report what about two months in the last two months well, why are you we'll, picking I'm just curious why you're picking two months because our assessment is overall since Minsk which was February 15th Overall, since February 15th, a majority of violations has been... Do you have a number? By the, I, I'm happy to see if there's a number to share. But again, but this... You, you said yesterday that you, that you would uh, see what that share And I think I've gotten quite is. a bit of information for you today on how we do this. I've looked at the reports you were citing to make sure I was familiar with them and noted, I think, particularly that, again, the OSCE does not assign blame. They tabulate... Uh, what has happened, as you mentioned. So we, our team goes through, has gone through every daily report. You know, impl it, it began implementation on February 15th. That's much more than two months. And our overall assessment, based on that, is that a majority of these have been committed by the Russian separatist forces. So one of the uh, latest statements from mm -hmm. uh, the OSC spokesperson is visited many heavy weapons, uh, that, that the uh, mission visited many heavy, heavy weapons sites on both sides and have recorded missing weaponry. So they m mentioned both sides, something that you never do. 
That's not true. I have repeatedly said that we call on both sides here to uphold the Minsk agreement. They both agreed to. On them, but, but what they're actually doing, you never criticized the as, side As I said yesterday, a majority for. of these are committed by Russian separatist forces. So by definition, that means a minority are committed by the other side. I, I also said that yesterday as well. Different today. When you have been asked about this in the past, mm -hmm. you and uh, and also Jeff, uh, which seems to have changed today, is that prior to today you have said the vast majority, the overwhelming majority, and today you're saying just the majority. There's, is that I, is that intended? No, to be? there's not. You haven't. I'm gone not back trying to any, change from. Yesterday. So you still think. It is still the U.S. government's assessment that the vast or overwhelming majority of violations are coming from the separatists. That's side. certainly my understanding, and I would also point but out that's not what you that that's not okay. what you said. I, I mean, I just want to make sure. Thank that you for being very. No, I, I appreciate that, but I also think, Matt, it's important to remember the big picture here and the context of what is happening between the September Minsk Agreement and the February implementation plan. Combined Russian separatist forces seized hundreds of square kilometers of Ukrainian territory in direct contravention to the agreement they had just signed. Uh, the OSCE cannot get access to separatist controlled areas to verify the ceasefire. And I have this map up here, I'm happy to give anyone afterwards, that shows the area the Russian separatist combined forces are preventing the OSCE from even getting to. So I think it's important, again, to step back and take a look at the bigger context here. Okay, but, but I just, it's I, not I, only, my, my, just my question though is let's just let Matt the, ask his I, question. Well, I just want to, but the I'm removal not, of the word vast or sig significant or substantial from in front of the word majority doesn't. I'm happy to say substantial, significant, vast, whatever, whatever word you would Why like. In, in providing access. So in the last two months, it's not just the rebels that are. Why are you doing, choosing two months? I'm, I'm because curious. Because I read, uh, we read the daily reports from. from well, there these, are some from before two months, though. J just, just as, as an example, to give you numbers. Okay. So 18 violations by the Ukrainian uh, forces. Well, that's not what the reports say, though. By the rebels. The reports do not assign blame. So you're assigning blame based on their numbers. The reports do not assign blame. To be but, very but clear, I've read the reports as well. Aren't you doing the same thing? Based on a, a whole of analysis. You're analyzing but, their so daily reports, Just be reports, very clear, right? that's your we are analysis. are analyzing them too. Right, They're right. in public domain. Right, Everyone but, can But wait, there. let me finish. To be clear, that's your analysis of what the OSCE is reporting. The OSCE does not say X number of violations by either side. The OSCE does not say those in those reports. And if you want to see this map, this red part, wait, no, let me finish. Number. This red part right here is the area that the Russian separatist forces won't let OSCE monitors in. How Do you have the area where the yes, Ukrainian it's forces very, are not Yes, it's this them? very tiny yellow okay. tip right there, and I'm happy to give this to you after the briefing. Where, where is that? Like. Where does it come from? It comes from the British government. I'm happy to give it to you after the briefing. <laughs> But not yep. from the OSCE, right? Go ahead. It doesn't come from the OSCE, can does we it? To, can we go to we can move on, yes. Um, oh, oh, sure, yeah. yes. Uh, the head of the Poroshenko bloc earlier today called for a food blockade on the Donbass region. Uh, he said, until the terrorists give up prisoners, we're going to continue firing and we're not going to give them food. Um, and he, he asked the Ukraine citizens that they are obligated to move to Ukraine-free territory. Uh, do you agree with these proposals? What is your reaction? I'm sorry, I hadn't seen those. I'm happy to check with our team. Okay. For you. Quick Russia. one on Russia. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, yesterday mm -hmm. there was a report. The Pentagon is seeking to ease sanctions on the RD-180s rockets. They need the rockets. Um, what is the State Department position? Uh, I'm ha I haven't heard of that. I'm happy to point you to the Pentagon. Just one short question about the, your statement uh, on okay. the shelling of uh, of uh, Marinka. Right? You had a, you made a statement yesterday Correct. about that. Correct. Yes. Did you have a statement, uh, did you have anything to say about uh, the shelling of the city of Donetsk the day before, on June 2nd? I'm there was heavy shelling on okay. June 2nd. I'm happy to check into that question with our team on the ground. Why, why do you focus only on the violations by the rebels? I, I don't think that that's the case. I pointed out a number of aggressive violations into Ukrainian government territory across the ceasefire line uh, just in the past 24 hours. I'm happy to look into any report. Uh, you give me and to make a comment comments on it based on the facts on the ground uh, and what we actually see there. I'm happy choose to choose to focus on one thing and not the other. I'm glad that that's your opinion. But again, well, we uh, call it like we see it. And, and this is how we see uh, what's happening in eastern Ukraine. Arsha. Do you have any, do you have any